So this happened a while back while I was still driving for Uber. And it was a normal Tuesday, around 6 p.m., near Venice, California. I pick up this guy, mid-40s, in a suit. He looked like a regular businessman. He gets in and I ask where he's headed. He tells me downtown. Cool, no big deal. I ask if he has a preferred route, and he says, No, whatever's quickest. So I start driving, and we hit the usual small talk. He starts with, So how long have you been driving for Uber? I tell him, About a year, it's a great job. He goes, Oh, cool, where do you stay? I answer, In the valley. And he says, Nice, nice. So how long have you been driving for Uber? At this point, I pause for a second, thinking maybe I did not hear him right the first time. But I brush it off and just say again, about a year. He says, oh cool, where do you stay at? I laugh nervously, thinking, okay, he's definitely messing with me. But no, he's dead serious, no smile, nothing. He's just looking straight ahead. So, I give him the same answer again. In the valley. And he goes, Nice, nice. So how long have you been doing Uber for? Now it's getting weird. I'm thinking, Is this guy playing a prank or what? But his tone was flat. It's like he's not even fully there. I decided to change up my answer and say, I just started. Actually, it's not for me. He pauses, looks out the window, and asks the same damn question again. Where do you stay at? I'm kind of on edge now, but I answer again. Then, finally silence. And at this point, we're on the 10 freeway, stuck in typical rush hour traffic. I glance in the rearview mirror, and I see him rubbing his head, like a really aggressively like someone who's either stressed out or coming off of something. He's taken off his jacket and is just sitting there, looking super uncomfortable. And I pull my phone out and dial 911, just in case, but I don't hit call. I'm not trying to overreact, but something's definitely off. Out of nowhere, he yells, Fuck! I'm startled, obviously, and ask, Um... Sir, is everything all right? In this deeper voice, way different from how he'd been talking before, he goes, Where are we? I try to keep it cool and say, We're on the 10, headed downtown. Is that still okay? He pauses for a second and says, Yes. Now traffic starts moving, and I'm just focused on getting this guy out of my car ASAP. A couple of miles from his destination, we're about to exit off the 10, and he yells again. Where are we? This time I'm freaked out, but I keep it together and tell him, We're almost at your place. Is that still where you want to go? He just says, Yes, that's fine, in that same weird, deep voice. Finally, we pull up to his address. I stop the car, and he gathers his stuff slowly like nothing weird just happened. He opens the door, steps out, and right before he walks away, he turns back, looks me straight in the eye, and in the calmest, most normal voice says, Have a great night. Watch out for the wild people. I swear, it was like he switched back to normal in an instant, like none of the weirdness in the car ever happened. After that, I sat in my car for a minute, just decompressing everything. It was one of the strangest rides that I have ever had. Not long after that, I went out and bought a taser because I wasn't about to be caught off guard again. And honestly, that ride was just the beginning of a string of weird encounters I've had before I stopped driving Uber altogether. It still creeps me out when I think about it. I started driving Uber about six months ago to make some extra cash. I usually stuck to the daytime shifts, but a few friends told me that the night scene 
especially near the bars, was where the real money was. So, last Friday, I decided to give it a shot. I figured I could pick up a few drunks, take them home, and call it a night. Easy money, right? Around midnight, I got a ping for a ride. It was a pickup about 20 minutes away from where I was, out in a part of town I don't usually go to. It wasn't the best neighborhood, but I figured, whatever, a ride's a ride. So I accept it, and drive over to this rundown apartment complex. The place looks sketchy, but I just wanted to get the passenger in the car and out of there as quick as possible. When I got there, I called the passenger, Melinda, and told her that I arrived. She said, okay, great. She'll be right out and just needs to grab her bag. I was feeling a little bit better about this whole situation because at least she wasn't one of those passengers who just keeps you waiting forever. Uber has this thing where you have a five minute wait period before you can cancel and get paid for a no-show. So I'm sitting there, watching the timer, hoping she hurries up so I can leave this area. Five minutes go by and there's no sign of her. I'm thinking, maybe she got held up inside or something. So I decide to give her another call before I cancel the ride. That's when things got weird. This time, when I called Melinda, a guy picks up. His voice was deep, and he sounds confused, asking, Who's this? I tell him I'm the Uber driver, here to pick up Melinda, and that I'm outside. He tells me there is no Melinda here, and that no one ordered an Uber, and that I should leave now. My stomach kind of drops, but I try to brush it off. Maybe the girl gave me the wrong number or something. But that would almost be impossible, because you have to book the Uber through your own number. Now I ask again if he's sure there's no Melinda there. I was just talking to her. He doesn't answer and just hangs up. Seconds later, I see two guys walking out of the apartment complex, both wearing hoodies and moving fast towards my car. And I try not to panic, but then I notice one of them has his hands in his waistband, like he's reaching for something. I did not stick around to find out what that was. I immediately hit the button to no-show the ride, lock my doors, and slam the car into reverse. I noped out of there so fast, my heart was pounding. And I didn't even care about the $10 from the no-show at that point. I just wanted to get the hell out of that apartment complex. After I got far enough away, I pulled over to catch my breath. It freaked me out so much, I ended my shift right there. But what really concerned me was... Melinda. What happened to her and... Who was that guy saying there was no Melinda there? I've done a lot of rides, but... That one shook me. I haven't done any night shifts since, and... Honestly, I don't think I will for a while. It's not worth the extra cash when you feel like you might not make it home. This happened about two years ago, and it's one of the main reasons I got a dash cam installed in my truck. I used to drive for Uber in downtown Orlando. It was around 2am, and I picked up a group of four passengers, three guys and one girl. The girl was completely passed out, and the guys pretty much dumped her in the backseat of my truck. At first I did not think much of it. It's downtown on a weekend night, and people drink way too much. But as I started driving, heading towards UCF where they were going, I overheard their conversation. They were talking quietly at first, but it was loud enough for me to catch what they were saying. One of the guys was bragging about how he had got her drinks all night and worked her up. Another one asked who was going to be the first one on her. That's when it hit me. These guys had malicious intents upon this drunk girl. They were talking about taking advantage of her like it was nothing. I could not believe what I was hearing. They all looked like college kids, and at first, I had assumed they were friends. But from what I was overhearing, they might not even know who this girl was. I kept driving, 
trying to keep calm and figuring out what I needed to do. We were getting closer to their destination and I needed to act fast. So I decided to play dumb when we got there. And I pulled up, parked, and told them, Hey, you guys should probably get one of her female friends to help her out. That's when one of the guys casually said, We don't even know who she is. That was it for me. I called 911 right in front of them. As soon as they realized what I was doing, two of the guys took off running. The other one, who apparently lived at the house where I dropped them off, started panicking. He begged for me to move my truck down the street or take the girl somewhere else, but I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't scared of these little shits. I just told him I was staying put until the cops got there. Within five minutes, the police showed up, followed by fire and EMS. The EMTs checked on the girl and took her to the hospital. She was still completely out of it, never even woke up during the whole thing. The guy who stayed behind, he ran inside his house and locked the door. When the cops knocked, he came out and tried to play it off like they were just sharing the ride, pretending he did not know her. It was his word against mine at that point. I told the officers everything I overheard, and the kids claimed they were just doing the right thing by taking a drunk girl home in an Uber. They couldn't find her phone or her ID, so the cops couldn't do much. They took my statement and let me go, but I never heard anything after that. I think about that night a lot. And I hate driving UCF students because of how many sketchy situations I've been in with them. But I'm honestly glad these guys got into my truck that night. I'm pretty sure I saved that girl. She probably doesn't even know what almost happened to her. But at least she's safe. Never since then, I've had a dash cam in my truck. If something like that ever happens again, I want video proof. Also... Keep an eye on your friends if they're drinking too much. Don't let them get into situations like that. Because not everyone is going to be as lucky as she was. Last night was probably the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. And I still can't explain what went down. So, I drive for Uber part time usually late at night because it's quieter and sometimes you get those long rides that pay well. It was around 10.30 p.m. when I got a request. It was about 30 minutes outside the city, further than I usually go, but I figured maybe the person wanted to head downtown. That's an hour-long ride and more money, so I thought, why not? That night was pretty nice cool breeze, so I rolled down my windows and enjoyed the drive. The road started getting more rural, winding and narrow. No streetlights for miles, just the glow of my headlights on the dirt road. Eventually, I pull up to what my GPS says is the address. It's a ranch style property, but there's no lights on, no sign of anyone around. The place is pitch black, and I've got that weird feeling like something's off. I decide to keep driving down the dirt path toward what I assume is another house, but after two miles, still nothing. I'm doubting my GPS at this point, but I'm already here, so I keep on going. Finally, I see a house up ahead. It's dark, no lights on at all, which feels weird for someone who just called for a ride, right? Anyway, I pull up and position my car so it's facing back toward the exit. I leave it in drive, with my foot on the brake, just in case. I sit there for a while, and nobody comes out. So I figure I'll give the guy a call. He answers, and he sounds super confused. Hey, I'm your Uber driver. I'm outside. No rush. Just letting you know I'm here, I said. Uber? I did not request a ride, he says, sounding even more confused. Uh, yeah, I'm at your address right now, at XYZ, Texas. It's your address in the app, I tell him. Texas? I'm in Indiana. I've never been to Texas. Please don't charge me. 
and then he hangs up. At that moment, everything around me feels like it gets even darker. And I turn down the radio and realize my window is still open. That's when I hear it. You know the sound of footsteps on a dirt road? That crunch with every step? I hear that, but it's not just one person. It sounds like two sets of feet, and they're running. The sound's getting closer and closer. I glance in my rearview mirror, and the only thing lighting up in the night are my brake lights. Then I see them. Two men, dressed in all black, running straight at my car. They're painted red in the glow of my taillights, and they're getting closer, fast. I don't even think. I slam my foot on the gas. The tires kick up dirt and rocks, and I hear the pebbles hitting them as I speed away. I drive like hell down that long winding road, not stopping until I get to a well-lit gas station. And I sit there for what feels like forever, just trying to process what happened. I tried following up with Uber, but nothing came of it. To this day, I have no idea what that was all about, or what would have happened if I hadn't driven off. All I know is, I'll never take a ride that far out again. When I was 18 and still pretty naive, I had a pretty horrible experience with Uber. It was around midnight and I was at a friend's place doing some laundry. My apartment laundry was shut down, so this was my only other option. My clothes finished drying and I folded everything up, tied the bag real tight and called an Uber to get home. The driver pulled up a few minutes later. Everything seemed totally normal. And I tossed my laundry bag in the back seat, hopped in and we headed out. As we drove, I realized I was out of smokes, so when we passed a gas station, I asked the driver to stop. He didn't seem to mind, so I got out, leaving my laundry bag in the car. It was tied up tightly and I did not think anything of it. Now, I was only in the store for maybe two minutes tops. I grabbed my cigarettes, paid quickly, but I had this weird feeling in my stomach the whole time. Something wasn't right. And I brushed it off as just being tired and walked back to the car. As I opened the back door to get in, I saw something that immediately made my heart drop. The driver was sitting there, staring forward like nothing was wrong. But in his lap was my underwear. He must have dug through my laundry bag while I was in the store. I froze for a second, just staring. My 18-year-old brain could not process what I was seeing. Then I snapped out of it. The driver didn't look ashamed or anything, almost like he wanted to see me uncomfortable. Without making a big deal, I just got in the car, sat down, and shut the door. I blamed myself for getting back in, but back then I was very introverted and was horrible with confrontation. The whole drive home, I stared out the window, not saying a word. I could feel my chest tightening as I saw him glancing at me in the rearview mirror. The driver did not say anything either. He just drove like everything was normal. I didn't know what to do. I kept thinking, what if he tries something? What if I never make it home? I was too freaked out to even look back at him. I couldn't wait to get out of that car. When we got close to my neighborhood, I didn't tell him to drop me off at my house. Instead, I had him stop a block away. I did not want him knowing where I actually lived. I got out as quickly as I could, mumbled a quick thanks, and practically ran to my house. I didn't look back. That was the last time I ever used Uber alone late at night. I never got my underwear back, and honestly, I didn't want it. I had my laundry machine fixed the next day, so I never had to be in that situation again. Hey, what's up guys, it's Spooky. If you've made it this far, congratulations, you survived. If you did not know, I have an Instagram. Follow me on there so we can connect. I also have a Patreon. 
on there you'll have direct access to me and can see the upcoming videos, polls, and soon to be exclusive stories only shared on there. If that's something that interests you, please consider joining. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Stay spooky and uh, I'll see you in the next video.